Welcome back to another vlog. Um, I also re am currently also reading through the Book of Romans and First Corinthians. If you're here for that, another video will come up soon. This is a vlog, just a video, of me talking, sharing my thoughts and musings. It's not in any way, shape, or form a Bible study, but I do talk about scripture because it is important to me. And also, there's an annoying fly in my room. I open the window, want the door to let some cool wind in because it, it's humid in here but it's fresh outside weird time of the year here in san antonio where the temperatures are changing and being weird some days hot some days fresh some days hot some days rainy some days not and yeah <laughs> that's been my life <sighs> okay i know it's just been so much on my mind christmas is coming so excited about that I love that time of year. This time of year, I know technically, like, people wait until Thanksgiving for them to start really getting in the Christmas mood. I decided to do a 40-day social media fast so that I could prepare my heart, my mind, my spirit for Jesus. I, I'm, this year has been a lot more of practicing self-control, having some self-discipline. I've struggled with struggled with it physically. <laughs> I am in a better routine physically. Um, spiritually, there's been, I've been more consistent than God. Like sincerely, it is the grace of God that has allowed me to be more consistent in reading in my word every day. The challenge is keeping my head clear <laughs> and focused. And so I'm doing a social media fast for 40 days. For that very reason, I want to make sure that I have more mental capacity and time capacity to spend time with Jesus on the daily. I love starting off my mornings with God, but I do catch myself throughout the day instead of praying. I just rely on social media. Like, yeah, people post, I mean, like here, I'm reading the Bible on here, but I don't want this ever to be the sole way that people receive an encouragement from God whether it's through a vlog of mine me sharing scripture in it praying over you guys on here or literally reading from the bible it is much better to spend your time specifically designated in bible study in reading his word um it's just so good it edifies us and and gives us ability to edify each other so yeah <laughs> I just have been, I don't know, God's so good. There's a lot of redemption. There's a lot of grace and mercy in God and just reviewing like what God's been up to in my life over the years. It's like, man, it's, it reminds me, what's his name? Billy Graham. He goes around, I guess like Venice. I think it's Venice. Well, somewhere along the LA area beach line. Just going up to people, talking to them, asking them about sin. <laughs> and, you know, come up with some in interesting answers. And sometimes I think about, like, you know, I do, you know, when we measure up to the Ten Commandments, there is some things that we don't realize that we're doing. And this is not for condemnation. This is as far as conviction. Like, wow, God. Yes, I hear you. There's some things, especially as me, as someone who wants to bear your image better and grow in you. There's so much more than I can that I can do. But looking back to over the past years of my journey from growing up in the Catholic Church to calling myself spiritual but not religious and not claiming Jesus, terrible time in my life by the way, do not recommend, do not whatsoever. Spent my time in new age for like five or seven years, incrementally got into witchcraft, divination, um, what else? Astrology. Like there's so much that I got into. I didn't go the route of like not believing in anything. I always believed in God and I believe Jesus existed. I just didn't make Jesus my Lord. And looking at that time, because even, well, even as someone who I felt dedicated when I was like in high school, I loved Jesus. I'm like, yeah, Jesus is the guy. 
my own sin, my own lack of support as well. I didn't have a belief. This is why it's also, I share as much as possible. Like get yourself linked up with some people who are faithful people who will hold you accountable, not condemn you, convict you through the holy word of God. There's some very abominable things that I have done and I'm not saying it lightly. It's pretty terrible, but I have been forgiven by the grace of God and set free from it. And just thinking back of the things that I tolerate, even within myself and in other people, has been vastly different over the years. I have a hard time sitting (laughs) with certain things and being around certain things, whether it's television, movies, conversations experiences it's just it's not the same (laughs) and thank god that i have grown actually this past weekend we've been talking about the kingdom of god at church really really honing in on the lord's prayer the kingdom prayer and we're (laughs) it's week two and we're like fourth fourth stanza you know stanza is not the word Hallow be thy name. Thy kingdom come. We were in that line. Literally, thy kingdom come. The kingdom of heaven coming onto earth is that line that we were on. Next week, we're going to continue in the next line. I love my church, by the way. It's so good. Very biblical. Love you, CBC. I don't know if anyone from CBC watches this. Probably not. Um, but <laughs> I have like five subscribers. Thank you. <laughs> love you guys. Um <laughs> just really spending time in that is just really he was talking about and just like man yeah we god didn't have to because god is like sovereign and powerful and just like all powerful all, all amazing and can do anything and yet he loves us and wants to partner with us in bringing heaven to earth heaven through us it's like how like how is that possible we're so imperfect and i can attest to that i am I'm one of those people that it's just, it's been an uphill battle. It's been one thing after another. And I thought I was fine. Like literally, like this has been an ongoing mental thing. Like I'm good. And then God convicts me of something and I'm like, oh, dude, what? (laughs) How? And then it keeps going on. And now I'm here at this place and it's like, I have still much more to grow, but I'm definitely not the same person I used to be 10 years ago even five years ago, even three years ago, two years ago, last year, I'm a different person. And it is through the grace of God that the scales have been removed off my eyes, that I see things in a different way, including the commandments. The commandments are beautiful and precious things that are not just, just there to limit us. No, actually they're there to set us free and keep us from hurting ourselves and each other. But through all of this is just fascinating (laughs) getting to hear other people's experiences as they grow with Christ. I, I don't know. It's so funny thinking about it. It's just that God really, really loves me and has a lot of mercy (laughs) towards me and a lot of grace. And when people really question that, I'm like, I guess I, you know, yeah, like I understand the grace of God, you know, when you don't know, you don't know. But once you're, once you experience God's eternal love for you at his fullest, especially as you're burying your soul to him and you feel that grace and that love and conviction, not condemnation, it's like, yeah, yeah, God is for real and he really loves me and wants me in heaven and wants me to be more like Jesus and is helping me get there and that part that's hard is full surrender it is a daily thing daily prayer keeping myself in check daily it is dying to my own flesh my own desires because sometimes my desires don't go with his sovereign will his his desires he gives us permissible desires or sorry he allows us to have our permissible will and choose our choosings that don't align with his. It's like, all right, you want it your way. Here you go. 
has not worked out for me, to be honest. I mean, to some degree, it's got to be, like, back to, like, surrendering towards God. But, the, like, the way I had to learn, or I didn't have to, but the way I chose to learn, I would not recommend. And I keep saying that. I really want. And it's, it was so terrible. Heart-wrenching pain. Confusion. Chaos loss depression anxiety like you know i highly recommend surrendering to god's perfect will he is so good but it can be very hard i think some of it sometimes has to do with like i thought i was a leader i thought it was this i thought all these things and some <laughs> societies and other things just a lot of brainwashing you know people think that christians are brainwashed but actually i really think that most of the rest of the world is, especially if you're not a believer, like there's just so much and there's like so much pain in the other side, pain without the freedom and love and grace and mercy versus, yeah, there's pain and suffering with Jesus, but it's freedom. There is love. There is mercy, grace. There is joy that makes no sense. And I am all for that. There's just something about uniting myself in God's will that's fulfilling uniting myself whenever I'm in pain no matter how severe (laughs) to the pain of Jesus Christ they're just I don't know just being in union with God is just it's the best thing in the world it is for sure how I want to live my life. I don't want to live my life any other way than doing it with Jesus, surrendering my will to the perfect will of the Father, his way, not my way, less of me, more of him. But yeah, that's me right now. I don't know what's been going on in your lives. Let me know if you have any specific prayer requests. Drop them down in the comments below. I'll be so glad to pray for you. I love you guys so much. Take care. Catch you in another video. Stick around for me reading the Bible some more, some other vlogs like this, and kingdom conversations I have with other brothers and sisters in Christ. Right now, it's only sisters in Christ. Let's see if I get a brother on here. All right. (laughs) Catch you guys later. Love you.